Next is outsourcing. And this is otherwise known as make versus buy. And outsourcing is very common. It's part of every company's consideration. And what do we outsource? It could be goods, services, or components. And all of these are possibilities for outsourcing. Why does it make sense? First is that it allows us to reduce and control our operating costs because we've locked in a cost and are not subject to changes. Next is it allows us to focus on what we do best. We call it core competencies. If you are distracted doing things you're not particularly good at, you're really hurting yourself because you're not allowing your resources to be deployed at what is your core capability. Third is maybe somebody's better than you at making it. Apple certainly did this by outsourcing screens to Samsung. Even though Samsung is the arch enemy, Samsung makes their screens because they're better at it and cheaper in manufacturing costs than Apple could ever be. But we gain access to perhaps better and cheaper sources of product. Next is it frees up resources for other purposes. It could be people resources like managers, or it could be physical resources like storage space or your factory. And maybe we just don't have the resources internally anyway, so you have to outsource because you don't have many other choices. Next is there are offshore capabilities that, again, could be lower cost and more efficient if we keep all manufacturing of components in a certain region. And finally, it might speed up our time to market because we could focus ourselves, maybe make the other aspects of our product quicker, and therefore the outsourcing will save us time and allow us to hit the market faster, which is a good idea because it's always a race to provide products to customers to preempt the entry of our company. All right, let's look at outsourcing. Outsourcing is very common, and let's do the model and an example. The manufacturer has offered to supply Connecco with all the flash drives of needs at a cost per unit of $11 per unit. And so if accepted, Connecco could eliminate all the production of the goods, but would ha still have overhead that it is unavoidable. That we call them unavoidable fixed costs. The normal production cost for manufacturing is $20,000 per period for overhead, and we would save $1,000 from the supervisor that we would not be needing, and that would be the change. Normal production still is 4,200 units, and the rest of the costs remain. So our average cost per unit is 16.67. And so now we're very tempted because our cost is 16. They're offering us at 11. Let's look at whether it makes sense or not. On the left side, we'll see the information that we just saw on the slide. On the right side, the analysis framed in the way we've been looking at it. One column here for alternative of making. The other column here for the alternative of buying. The change that we're looking at is outsourcing, and there is this important consideration that we'd save a little bit of money on the manufacturing overhead if we were to outsource. So let's put the analysis. Purchase from vendor in this scenario zero, and we'll purchase all of it in this scenario from the vendor. The direct labor per unit is what we've seen before, $3. The direct material, $4 per unit. Overhead, $2. As selling an admin, $1. So total is $10. We've seen that before. Next, when we do the fixed cost per unit, we'll do the 20,000 divided by units. And then we'll do 8,000 divided by units. And the total is 1667 for the manufacturer. All right, that's why we're tempted. Next, we have 4,200, and then direct labor would be zero, direct material zero, manufacturing would have zero, right? We outsourced it. But the selling and administrative remain because we still have people that sell our product and work in the office, a dollar. Total variable cost will be $12 per unit. However, the manufacturing costs, there's unavoidable manufacturing costs. So what we're able to see, open friends, we had $20,000, and how much are we saving? A thousand minus a thousand divided by units, 4,200 units. So we still have 452 and fixed selling administrative, same, dollar ninety. Our total fixed costs are 1643 and our total costs are 1843. In this case, it doesn't look so good. We're going to be having higher costs. We could stop right here because we know that costs are higher. Let's look in total dollars and see the magnitude of this. Variable costs are $10 times units of 4,200 
the fixed cost, 60, 67 times 4,200. The price from the vendor is zero in this case. And overhead costs we've already taken into account. So total costs are 70. We've seen that before. 70 divided by 4,200 is 1667, right? So it's all squared up. So the variable cost here is a dollar per unit. So that's a dollar times the 4,200. And then the fixed costs are 643 times 4,200. And then the price paid is $11 times 4,200. And so the other overhead, it's not equal here. And total cost, the sum, is 77,400. And that represents the cost per unit of 1843. Answer, do not outsource. That's the answer here, right? So we did it on top to get a glimpse, but we showed on the bottom the total dollar magnitude. And we would actually cost ourselves money, $7,400 more money by outsourcing, even though it was tempting because we thought it would be at 11. But since we have unavoidable costs, our overall actually is to stay put, do not outsource. We have some other thoughts on outsourcing because the whole notion of outsourcing is deceptive and tempting because they came in at 11. We thought our costs were at 1667, which is true. However, what we didn't really factor in is that some of those costs don't go away if we outsource. So we have to consider through our analysis of the cost now, that's make, and the cost if we outsource, including the unavoidable fixed costs. And so in this case, the issue wasn't the 11, the issue was the unavoidable manufacturing costs. If we were able to reduce the cost further from 19 down to a lower number, we would have chosen the other way around. We would have chosen to outsource instead. We could find a way to reduce our cost by using the unused space, by redeploying it to another operation, or to sublease it to an outside person to reduce our fixed manufacturing costs. But in this case, as is, if we only save $1,000 on salary, don't do it. Number four is sell or process further. I hope this is more common sense. And this is where we have a product that we make and we could stop at a midpoint and sell it as is or keep going, add more value and sell it for a higher price. So that's our, our decision. And there's two ideas. One is a joint product or the other is a single product. In this case, we're doing an example to illustrate if we just have a single product. Stackham manufactures bookshelves, and if they're ready to paint, namely midpoint in the manufacturing, or sell them for $30, and it will cost them $18. If they continued on and painted the shelves, the cost of the shelf rises to 23, but they would sell them for $38. So what should they do? If they have fixed capacity of 1,000, and that the demand for each exceed 1,000. In other words, they could make whatever they want, and they would sell out. Let's go to our Excel. And this is on the left, on the right. The price is $30 for ready to paint. The cost is 18. The profit per unit is 30 minus 18 or 12. The number of units is 1,000. So the total profit made is $12,000. Turn of one is just make the ready to paint be done with it. Second is let's paint them. The price would be 38 and the cost would be 23. And so the profit per unit is 15. Units still the same, 1,000. And the profit we make is 15 times that. So we would, in this case, make the units or continue making all the way to the end product. And the painted shells would make more money to us. We'd make an extra $3,000 to the good. All right? answer here, keep going. So again, some observations. There's no uh, capacity consideration here because we had enough uh, capacity to only make a thousand and whatever we made, we can sell out. So this one's really simple. What would have made it more complicated? Well, what if there's more than one product coming out? And this is what we call split off points where a good example is refineries. Inside one side of the refinery comes raw materials like crude oil and out from the factory itself comes gasoline, motor oil, plastic components, etc. That makes it complicated. The other is joint costs, where 
there's one process that manufactures a number of items that then go downstream. And an example of this is cocoa beans, right, to make chocolate. We have a machine that creates the cocoa nibs and then powder, then white chocolate, dark chocolate, etc. The sharing of costs that benefit the intermediate or final products is a tricky thing. How do we allocate costs so we can make the right decisions?